On this episode of Getting the Most, we're going to talk about lithium polymer battery break-in, as well as going over battery break-in technique and actually documenting the break-in of a brand new 12S stick pack. Battery break-in has been a pretty talked about topic um, for a lot of years now. Um, one, they're, they're a big investment, so you want to get the most out of your investment, as well as they're kind of an expendable item. Um, where a helicopter frame, you know, an airframe or a chassis can, can last for thousands of flights, you know, many, many years. Um, a battery is kind of has a lifespan. I mean, it does have a lifespan. So you want to get the most out of it and the most performance out of it. Over the years, I have asked um, a lot of the factories um, and the different companies that I represent of what is the best way to break in a battery. And while that technique kind of varies, uh, the information that I get from those guys is always super consistent. So I'm really comfortable sharing this um, as well as kind of showing this documentation of the, the specific technique that I use uh, because you can actually see the results. Um, so information wise, first of all, I am by no means a chemist or um, battery engineer, you know, energy, anything like that. Um, so I try to ask as many questions as I can. The one thing that really always stands out um, is that when I ask the, the different manufacturers this, um, they say that the batteries do need broken in. They're absolutely not broken in from the factory. Um, if the factories were to do that, um, the, the storage life or the shelf life of the battery when it's being sold to people um, would be cut drastically. Um, there is some chemistry inside there that you kind of, like I said, I, I can't even try to explain it. You just got to get the juices flowing. Um, and uh, so this technique uh, seems to really work well for me, which is um, when I get a brand new battery, uh, I charge it at 1C uh, for the first 10 flights, as well as the first 10 flights are only half flights. Now, I've also heard that you need to get the battery warm. So just putting it on a cycler 10 times at, at a low current probably isn't going to do as good a job as if you actually put it in the helicopter and fly it at its normal current draw, but just cut that in half so you're not draining the battery down to like nominal voltage or really low. Um, and then after those 10 flights, I can definitely see a difference. Um, I typically don't even look at the IRs when they're brand new because I know they're gonna be pretty high. Um, but I see it an imbalance when I get them from the factory. Sometimes one cell will be a little low. Um, but then after this process is finished, by the 10th flight, uh, all the cells are in line, everything's happy, and the IR is, is from what I understand, very good. Um, so first, I want to go over a couple of the products. Um, I said that I would be very transparent um, in the uh, video. I, I said which products that, I'm re that I represent um, as a sponsored pilot or products that I just happen to use. Um, the Maniax, I am a sponsored pilot for Maniax, and some of the information from this video has been asked to the Maniax factory, um, and I'm definitely using their information. Um, RC Pro Plus, uh, the Super X connectors, they're great, they're solderless. Um, I use them on everything. Um, I also represent that company. I do not represent ISDT. Um, and so I really don't know many details about the chargers or, the, or their charging logic, but I do have fantastic results with them. Um, a friend of mine gave me the, a couple T8s, and I think these are actually discontinued now, um, but I keep them around as a great DC charger. Um, AC-wise, um, I've got the, the little D2. This one, I love going, taking this if I'm just playing with nitro or something small, um, as well as it's got a, a USB port inside so I can charge my transmitters. And then this is actually marketed originally as an industrial charger. Um, I happened to run across it when I was looking for a, a charger for some UAV stuff. Um, and I had seen that it's up to 16S. The built-in power supply is awesome. 110 to 240, if I go to Europe, I can just plug it right in. Um, it also has USB ports on the back um, to charge transmitters. And charger wise, and also they have uh, their own uh, balance boards for up to 16S, so you can run just a uh, single JST. Um, Charger-wise, I take these out of the box, I plug them in, I save my memories, and go to town. So there's nothing at all changed on these. Um, I use these exactly. I've actually got a video on YouTube about how I personally install these, which is exactly how the factory recommends. And battery-wise, uh, you're now going to get to see the performance of battery uh, real-time. 
Um, so this battery actually broke in um, using the technique that I just described, and I'll go ahead and show you that now. Okay, this is the first charge on the battery that I'm gonna show breaking in. Um, as you can see, after I take it off the charger, it finishes, and from the factory, it was about half charged. Um, I don't have the main leads connected yet, but I just plugged in the balance port. Um, and this is after the first kind of break in flight. Um, so you can see there is some voltage difference. They're kind of just a little bit, um, I won't say all over the place, but they're all just a little bit different. Um, and so I'm gonna go ahead and charge this back up at 1C um, from this condition. Okay, this is after the third break in flight. Um, I flew it probably a little bit longer than what I should have this time or what I what I try to do, but you can see that just after that, these cells are getting pretty close now. Um, everything's all kind of evening out after they fly. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and charge it. Okay, so this is after the sixth flight. Um, by now, uh, the factory has said that these are probably broken in. We'll go ahead and look at those. Um, you can tell they're super imbalanced. I mean, talking a hundredth of a volt um, is, is pretty much next to nothing. So anyways, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do 10, just uh, kind of peace of mind, and I'll show you uh, what the first uh, fully drained uh, flight is like. Okay, so I've got it plugged in. This is after a completely full flight. Um, probably could have flown it a little bit longer. Uh, I just, the second my timer hit three minutes, I stopped. Um, but this is the first kind of full, full on flight I did. And you can see it stayed pretty balanced. A um, couple cells are hundredth of a volt off. But good. It's actually still warm from the flight. So, go ahead and start charging. Now, at this point, after. Um, the 10 cycles, I'll start charging at 2C. Okay, uh, I'm back. I let this battery fully charge. It actually only put 4,000 milliamps in it. Um, took 30 minutes to fully charge and balance at 10 amps. Uh, as you can see, the balance looks really good. Um, fully charged. Um, it's even sat for a little bit. It actually, I, I let it sit for a little bit after it charged, so it's been sitting here on the charger. Um, let's look at the IRs. Okay, I mean they look pretty good. They're they're all pretty balanced. It's so you can see, I think that technique and those results really speak for themselves. Um, myself, just like you guys, I want to get the most flights that I can out of these things. So it is a pretty. I stick to that technique pretty strictly, um, and it's proven really well. I do want to bring up one thing. When I go to fun flies, um, a lot of times when I land, you'll hear the RPM drop. And a lot of guys go, man, you're so rough on those batteries. Oh my gosh. Well, it's because I actually have the ESC set to cut to 70% once it reaches uh, 80%, 4,400 4, milliamps of these 5,500s. Um, you can see my ESC settings. I'll put them up here. Uh, and I think that is a great feature because uh, if you use a timer, you know, sometimes you miss it. Um, I know I've got telemetry, capacity telemetry on my Fataba, and I've actually got it set to vibrate um, when it reaches uh, a certain capacity. And uh, I think just sometimes when you get focused, you're, you're focused, you're in the moment, you just pass all that. Well, when the RPM uh, drops, it's like, oh, okay, it's time to land. So I think that's a great feature. Yeah. I do try to use those features that these manufacturers have built into their product to try to take care of the batteries. I mean, I definitely recommend that to everybody else out there as well. In terms of how I treat the batteries after that 10 flight break-in and I see those results where everything seems broken in is nice and even, um, then I just fly them for full flights and I fly them until what I believe is 80%. You know, obviously sometimes I drain them lower than that um, when I go up for the really high autos, um, but I've noticed that that like, you know, single times doing that doesn't really hurt them. Um, and after you do this break-in process, they seem pretty robust after that. One other thing that was um, actually brought to my attention um, was that on these uh, 12S stick packs, um, and any battery for that matter, uh, there is actually no mechanical device uh, that is connecting uh, these wires to the battery cell terminals. Um, so I, I did just want to remind everybody, these days it's so common with, um, with the battery trays and the helicopters, you know, the sliding battery trays. Um, that these actually, you don't want to pull the battery in and out by the wires, like not use these as kind of as a handle. Um, you actually do want to grab the battery. 
if you pull or tug on these wires too long, too, too many times, uh, you could actually fatigue uh, those joints and eventually potentially have a failure. Uh, we'll see you either at the flying field or at the next uh, getting the most.